through. Now, during World War II, as well as the official military manuals issued to soldiers, the soldier could also go to the bookseller and purchase manuals. Mainly, they were on how to use captured enemy weapons. A lot of them were aimed at the home guard and civil defence, but some were aimed at soldiers heading overseas, so anybody could really buy them. Um, they, were, they were generally sold for about a shilling a piece, and the more that were purchased, the cheaper they were. So they were available to units and battalions at a discounted price. Average size of them, they were this sort of size. This particular one is on captured enemy weapons that the home guard and the soldier may encounter. It's got a little bit about the Tiger tank, so it dates from a bit later on in the war, but there's actually no picture of a Tiger tank, which is very scant details. So it could be aimed at the defence of Britain, but predominantly it was for a soldier serving overseas that might find an enemy weapon. Designed to be folded up, kept in his pocket, not designed to last forever. This one's lost the pages. I think it was part of a series. Um, cost about a shilling, but it's jam-packed full of information of the then known German weapons. It's also got some really obsolete, obscure stuff that the soldier may encounter. Some heavy gear and some AFV pictures as well. Very useful thing for the soldier serving overseas. Of a bit of use to possibly the home guard and anybody in defence of Britain throughout the war. But as I say, there's a little bit on the Tiger tank, so this one dates it kind of mid 44 ish. So we'll have a look at this and just to see the sort of things that the Britons were told to keep off for and how to use. Very interesting book. And the line drawings, what we've got, as I said, the cover's missing off it. It's all laid out a bit like this. You have particulars of the weapon, safety stripping, and to load it. We have the steer solithern automatic carbine. You have the Irma carbine, the Neuhausen carbine, the MG-15 in the in the aircraft mode, at the ball joint, it's the observer's gun, no stock, drum magazine, classic thing you'd find in a shot down Heinkel. Then you have the MG-34 on its tripod. And then a bit better detail of the MG-34. 8cm mortar. Fifty millimeter light mortar. The Luger, the Mauser, the Walther P38, and all the characteristics and how to use them. German stick grenades. The enemy probably know about your grenades, so some details are given of the best known types. So you have the egg grenade, the model 24 stick grenade. Then you have a little bit on Polish machine guns used by Germany. Then you have characteristics of German gliders that you may encounter. So the Gotha glider, the Meersburg glider, the Goliath. Then you have various bits on German vehicles, light armoured cars, medium armoured cars, heavy armoured cars, light tanks, medium tanks. Panzerkampfwagen 5 heavy tank. And you have brief details of the German Tiger tank. And it says, no available illustration of this AFV. So they, so they, at that time they didn't know what it actually looked like. And you have characteristics of French and Czechoslovakian tanks. Data charts of AFVs and armaments of a Panzer division. Then you have a 50mm anti-tank gun. Characteristics of captured guns that may be used by the German army. 105 gun. It doesn't tell you how to use or fire them, by the way. It just tells you what an identification if you're in the field. 37mm gun. 210mm howitzer. 105mm howitzer. There's a little bit on German small arms ammunition. And the 75mm infantry gun. And the 20mm anti tank gun. So, as I say, just an interesting item aimed at. The soldier going overseas, mid-1940s, also of some use to the defence of Britain. Jump pack full of information. Something like this 
cheap at the time, cost about a shilling. On the likes of eBay, you're looking at something that will sell for maybe a tenner, which is about $20. So an interesting item. In my life.